In this video, I'll talk about uh, what is a partial uh, autocorrelation function, which in short known as uh, PACF. Okay, so partial autocorrelation is some sort of autocorrelation uh, which is conditional in nature. Hence, it is also known as the conditional correlation. Okay, so what is the condition here? Okay, so let's try to understand how uh, partial correlation is different from a simple correlation okay um, so let's say there are two time series uh, with us yt and yt minus s okay so yt minus s is nothing but the uh, the s lag of of yt okay um, so there will be time series uh, you know between them also yt minus 1 yt minus 2 up to yt minus s plus 1 so a simple correlation between yt and yt minus s is nothing but the correlation between yt and yt uh, minus s whereas partial correlation is different um, in in one aspect that we take the control of all the intermediate values so what are the intermediate values in this case so what are the intermediate values or intermediate uh, series between uh, yt and yt minus s it's yt minus 1 yt minus 2 up to yt minus s plus 1 so yt minus s plus 1 yt minus s plus 2 up to uh, you know yt minus 1 so we have taken uh, you know these intermediate values take we have taken out this intermediate values and then found out the uh, correlation and that's known as the partial autocorrelation so now the obvious question is why we need to do all these things We'll, we'll uh, you know, uh, use the example of PACF uh, in in uh, one of a, one of the very uh, important purpose in the next slide, and we'll get to know and uh, we'll get to understand why uh, what is its use. Okay. So mathematically, we represent the, uh, uh, like this covariance of yt yt minus two. Let's say uh, we want uh, PACF between uh, say yt and yt minus two or lag two. Okay. So the PSA between yt and yt minus 2. So, how do we get it? Uh, covariance of yt, yt minus 2, conditional to yt minus 1. So, this is the intermediate, and we are taking this out, or we are, uh, you know, condition, uh, we are taking uh, the uh, covariance conditioned to the fact that we have taken out uh, yt minus 1. And then, variance of yt given uh, yt minus 1, or, you know, taking the effect of yt, yt minus 1, and variance of yt minus 2 condition to conditional to yt minus 1 okay uh, so the uh, idea is to take the intermediate effect of all the lags between you know um, you know if, if for example there are s lags between yt and yt minus uh, s take the effect of all these lags uh, and find out the correlation in that way uh, one would be able to find out uh, you know correlation between not just uh, similar uh, you know um, the uh, the immediate effect but also uh, you know uh, some sort of a conditional effect to be able to uh, detect uh, very important aspects of time series now let's take uh, let's understand the uh, the uses of this okay so pacf is very useful in detect detecting the order of the air process okay so Let's plot the uh, ACA function of AR1 process. So the ACA function of AR1 process will look like this. Okay, it start with in the lag one, it start with some sort of a value, and then it gradually decays, right? It it follows some sort of a geometrical uh, decay, right? And and slowly, slowly, it's going to go down to zero, right? Um, but the PACF will have a different pattern. So PACF for the AR1 process will have a you know last value for lag one. And it will gradually it is not going to gradually decay it's directly going to be uh, zero after that okay so all the other values at you know certain confidence level are going to be uh, very close to zero or equal to zero okay so the PSA value uh, in lag 2 lag 3 lag 4 and so on uh, it's going to be uh, very close to zero or equal to zero so for air where air one process it's always the first lag for which the PSA will be significant um, so PSF is very useful to detect the order of 
uh, and uh, air process okay let's say let's say we have air 2 series right so in air 2 series also we'll have the ACA function like this so this is ACF if you plot ACF you will have similar pattern pretty much like uh, the air one okay for different lags now this decay is also pretty similar to this decay air one decay of ACF is exactly or more or less same as uh, air two uh, process so one would be confused as to uh, which uh, whether the process follows air one or air two okay uh, but if you actually plot a PACF of the air two process it will look something like this you will have uh, you know significant value for the lag one and then significant value for the lag two and then it's going to become zero okay so by looking at the ACA function for AR process it is not very clear whether it's AR1 or AR2 whereas by looking at the PACA function it is very clear whether a series is following uh, AR1 or uh, it's a AR2 uh, series right because uh, in AR2 you will have like the PACA value uh, the PACA value for two lakhs are uh, significant and that's one of the uh, you know important use of PACF uh, function. There are of course other uses in the different time series processes. Okay, so for more videos, you can uh, subscribe to our channel and you can also go to our website in the description uh, to uh, learn more more of quantitative techniques. Thank you.